Beerus looks dissatisfied. Hey guys, Masako X here, and I'm gonna take you back in time to the far off year of 2015 AD, a year where famous people weren't dying nearly as often. In April of that year, Toei Animation were riding a high off the back of two successful feature films, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. Together, those films garnered over a hundred million dollars worldwide. That's a lot of muffins. So, understandably, you'd want to make a series to kind of keep that gravy train going. Why not make a new series then? It made sense. Dragon Ball Kai's second stint on television was beginning to end, so something major had to fill in that Sunday morning time slot. And I'm not talking about another Dragon Ball rerun. With Toriyama's confidence fully restored after a really rocky time with Dragon Ball Evolution's production, in that the Western producers basically told Toriyama to f off, which in turn spurred Toriyama to develop Battle of Gods with Toei Animation, the series was announced on April 28th, 2015, not too long after the theatrical release of Resurrection F in Japan. Everyone was stoked. The internet was hype! The train was pulling out of rumor station! I actually remember the moment when I found out about Super. I was actually at work and I got a message from my Twitter followers, and they were asking for what my thoughts were. And I read the press announcement and I thought, please don't be a hoax, please don't be a hoax, please don't be a hoax, please don't be a hoax. So the next question, after the fans stopped jumping up and down with glee, was this. Are we gonna have another GT on our hands in that Toriyama throws in some concept designs at the beginning and then buggers off? Fortunately not. The believed workflow is this. Toriyama writes the basic overview of the upcoming arc, designs some key characters, and then oversees the development of the script, which the writers and producers of Toei work on. So with Toriyama's involvement in Super much more than it was in GT, the fans started to get optimistic for its July release. Finally, we were gonna get the series that GT should have been. But things started to get a little shaky upon further scrutiny, particularly with the initial announcement. It was just an announcement. We knew the name, we knew that Masako Nozawa would reprise the Son family, and we knew the series producer. That's pretty stale for something so huge. Then we find out that the first two arcs of Super were going to be extended retellings of the two movies that we just seen. I hadn't even seen Resurrection F yet, because it didn't come out in the UK until September of 2015. By the time that came along, I'd have just seen the movie, so I'd be bored rigid, and I can imagine that fans outside of Japan would have felt the same. Well, there may have been plot points that we either rushed over or ignored completely, I did feel that in Resurrection F there were loads of things that left so many questions in my mind such as the hierarchy of the gods and the whole Super Saiyan Blue chestnut. I remember for months after that movie came out, nobody knew what Super Saiyan Blue was or even the name Super Saiyan Blue. Back then it was just Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Super's intention was to give us all the answers that we needed. Sounds good. But then you run into the problem that movie and television budgets are vastly different. And the difference between each medium showed. Let's make it clear. Animators in Japan have to deal with seriously stressful working conditions. Deadlines are tight, the work life is fraught with setbacks, and the quality control targets are ludicrous. You can't just simply blame the animators for all of Super's shortcomings. They're having to deal with committees, stupidly short deadlines, and also having to make it look the same as it was in two very good looking movies. Speaking of the movies, both movies cost around $8 million to produce. $3 million for Battle of Gods, and $5 million for Resurrection F. How much does an anime TV series cost to make? Far less. According to an article on Anime News Network, the producer for the series Shirobako, which is all about the animation industry in Japan, cited that his anime cost roughly $4 million to make for a 24 episode run, and that included the production, the marketing, and to even get it on TV. That's roughly $160,000 per episode. Now that's an above average figure for an anime budget, so let's be generous and give Super this budget. It could be far less than this, but I'm being generous today. Each Super arc going up to Resurrection F lasted about 14 episodes. So if we use that $160,000 figure, we get about $2.2 million budget per arc. Now you might be thinking that that's not far off Battle of Gods' budget, but it's less than half of Resurrection F's. And then you're having to deal with 
weekly deadlines, animators having their hands full, and TV committees. Movie deadlines are far more flexible. By using the first two movies as the basis for two arcs, Super shot itself in the foot majorly. Due to the tight deadlines and the very questionably silent announcement of Super, it was only going to spell bad news from the beginning. Yeah, we know what happened there. One of Super's directors, Tadayoshi Yamamuro, explains why Super had to struggle at the beginning of its run at an interview last year in Barcelona. His explanation read thusly. The criticism we've received has been way too overblown. Someone put a few video sequences that looked bad onto the internet, and people focused on them when talking about an entire series. You cannot criticise an entire product by only looking at a few sequences. The animators responsible for those scenes are newbies who just started working at this level in the industry, which means their skills are evolving right now. This is a real dilemma. There are a lot of newbies coming up through the industry right now, and production time is limited. That's the reason why anime quality has deteriorated slightly. The time for post-production has been reduced more and more to an unsustainable level. The director barely has time to check the final product. There is no time for review after all the work of the animation process, and as a result, the quality suffers. So there you go. This isn't just something that Super's having to deal with. Most new anime productions have to deal with the same problem. This is why Super, at least at the beginning, suffered poorly. Less experienced animators, tighter production quotas, and a lack of available oversight due to the directors being stretched to breaking point, as well as the senior animators who could then oversee the newer animators working on other productions, such as loads of One Piece stuff, including movies last year. Over the months, Super's animation has been steadily improving, and in some cases it's been pretty good in recent weeks. It's good to see that most of Super's initial problems have abated slightly. Those things shouldn't have happened to Dragon Ball at all. Dragon Ball is one of Toei's most important franchises. It makes so much money worldwide. It can justify a bigger budget and a bigger workforce. But I guess that doesn't really matter if you still have tight deadlines. Speaking of deadlines, that's probably why that recent episodes had two week gaps instead of one week gaps. That allowed the animators to catch up and further define future episodes, and that's only been to the series' benefit. Nevertheless, Super had a very troubling start, and the internet is a very unforgiving place. Dragon Ball Z didn't really have that problem due to the fact that the internet was far less developed than it is today. We have nostalgia goggles, so we're more forgiving to Z's animation issues. There were some, there's no denying it, we don't have nostalgia to support Super and we can see every single flaw. It's up to Toei now to further develop the improvements of Dragon Ball Super and give the world a series that justifies the Dragon Ball label. And it's up to us to understand how hard it is for Japanese animators and to have faith in them that things will get better. I'd like to know what you think of this as well as your thoughts on the initial Super thing and whether it's improved in recent months. Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe these videos and check out my other Dragon Ball discussion videos. Now I'm going to be pushing back on these a little bit due to the fact that Xenoverse 2 is coming out, but there will be Dragon Ball discussions going forward, there'll just be fewer of them. But until next time guys, catch you later.